The federal conservative leader and Alberta's premier are facing criticism for posing for photos at the Calgary Stampede with a man wearing a straight pride t-shirt. Now the shirt reads, thank a straight person today for your existence. A spokesperson for Pierre Polyev's team says he doesn't agree with the message and didn't read the shirt before posing for the picture. Premier Danielle Smith had a similar response when asked about this picture. Now, both say they do support the 2S LGBTQ plus community. For more on this, I am joined by Fareed Khan, founder of Canadians United Against Hate. Fareed, good to have you on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, you were very vocal about uh, the outcome of this picture. You've already sent a statement out, and you're an interesting person to talk to because you have worked with politicians before. So just first off, I want to get your reaction to this photo and Polyev's team's response. Well, I think that uh, any politician who is out in public needs to know who they're going to be seen with and who they're going to be photographed with. Now, if this person holds these views but wasn't wearing the T-shirt, one could you know, say, fine, he didn't know what this person stood for. However, the person wears his uh, bigotry very much uh, in a visible way. And when politicians go out to these events, they're not alone. They're surrounded by their staff assistants and entourage. So as people were waiting to get photographs taken with him, I'm sure that the staff who were vetting the people could see this shirt. And if they had done their job correctly, then they would have made sure that uh, Mr. Polly Ever did not get photographed with this man and he would have avoided this uh, this grief. You mentioned that vetting process. So what what is the vetting process like for politicians when they're out in public like this? Well, I mean, it's clear that there are some people who are well known uh, in terms of uh, people who are leaders in um, various hate movements or white supremacy movements. Those people should be flagged from the very start by staff within uh, the politician's office. However, in this instance, um, where people are waiting to get a in line to get a photograph taken, the vetting should be that the staff person who is um, uh, the control at that event should make sure that such people, particularly this one, that has a very visible statement that basically says, you know, I don't think much of the LGBTQ2 community or the trans community, and uh, I'm going to wear that visibly. And if, uh, if the staff had done their job, then this photograph would not have happened and there would be no story here. But the fact that they did either says that they're okay with transphobic and homophobic messaging, or it says they're incompetent. And either way, um, that doesn't bode well for Mr. Polyev. And this isn't actually the first time that the conservative leader has taken a problematic photograph with people. And, you know, when politicians stand with people like this, what kind of message does it send? Well, it uh, basically says to the people who are promoting ideologies of hate, um, it gives them legitimacy. And it says, hey, look, this guy's standing with us. And, and so uh, we should, uh, uh, you know, we should continue doing what we're doing. And we should have... Um, uh, have more opportunities like this so that we can get our message out. Basically, it energizes the people who are delivering this message. And Fareed, just before I let you go, you know, we're seeing more and more hate incidents year after year, uh, alarmingly increasing. What do you want to see done from local and federal governments when it comes to combating hate? Well, we and other anti-hate activists have been calling for years for the federal government to lead a national a uh, coordinated um, anti-hate strategy with provincial and lower tiers of government uh, so that we have a national um, campaign countering hate. For the last decade, year after year, we've seen um, hate crime numbers increase, and those are just the ones that are reported. More than 99 percent of hate crimes are not reported. According to a study that was released in 2021, um, uh, you are more likely to be in a car accident or sorry, you're more likely to be uh, a victim of a hate crime than to be in a car accident. And that's very disturbing. And the federal government needs to put the resources in place and put a program in place and work with provincial and municipal governments to make sure that these ideologies are pushed back because otherwise we're headed down a very dangerous path. Furry, thank you for taking the time tonight to speak with us on such an important issue. Thank you for having me again. That's Furry Khan, founder of Canadians United Against Hate.